I have a question. I think I need to get in shape. And at the time he was carrying like an extra 50 or 60 pounds mm -hmm. of weight. And then he said, uh, yeah, you know, I just don't feel good. You know, smoking too much, drinking mm -hmm. too much. I just don't feel good. And people ask me this kind of stuff all the time. Yeah. Like, what do I do? How do I sleep better? How do I stop stressing? And usually I find that people are not serious, meaning they, they want an answer, but they don't want to do the work. Right. Yeah. right. So I was like, look, it's really simple. Can you not eat until 2 p.m.? Mm. I was like, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not hungry in the morning. I'm like, great, drink coffee, drink water, and in the morning, get up and just get on either run or get on some exercise bike and just pedal like someone's chasing you with a syringe full of poison. And the reason I felt any, uh, you know, uh, sense of agency in giving this information is, yeah, I've done a bunch of different things in neuroscience related to vision and neuroplasticity and stress, but I, I've done some work and continue to do some work with special operations and some of these groups that are interested in how you use biology to improve human performance mm -hmm. over long periods of time. Okay. So, and so there's a pretty straightforward formula where when you've been asleep all night, your fuel reserves, you got fuel in your fat, you've got fuel in your muscles that can mm -hmm. be burned and you've got fuel in your liver. It's called glycogen. And mm -hmm. when you wake up early, all of that is as low as it's going to be because you haven't been eating anything. Got gotcha. you. And so if you exercise, then your body starts dropping into your body fat stores quicker. So what I was trying to give Mike was a, was a tool that would allow him to see some results really quickly. Oh. So I said, look, do it fasted mm -hmm. and then continue to hydrate and then eat your first meal in the afternoon. And I said, and also, it, you know, do you like drinking? And he was like, well, I don't know. I drink mostly because it kind of sets me straight up here. And I was like, well, we can talk about the stuff to kind of set your head level. I mean, he wasn't spun out. He just obviously was m medicating with alcohol. Sure. So I said, you know, would you be willing to drop the drinking or, or, you know, pair it back? Yeah. And he said, sure. So, okay. So explain that. And I said, look, and you know, here's my number just, um, for the anxiety and stress management, uh, I'll give you some breathing, some respiration tools that work really well. And I'm not gonna tell you to meditate 30 minutes a day, although that's a cool practice too. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you some tools you can use in real time as you're working hard and okay. dealing with whatever it is you're dealing with in life. Okay. So that ends the conversation ends a year later, Mike reach out, reaches out and says, hey man, thanks for all that stuff you gave me. I was like, oh, cool. And he's like, I lost 60 pounds and I <laughs> haven't had a sip of alcohol since we talked last wow. and I'm feeling pretty good. Damn. And I was like, so how did you do it? He's like, well, I get on the bike and I pedal as hard as I can and like someone chasing me with a <laughs> syringe full of poison. Sure, sure. And, uh, I was like, he remembered. Yeah. You know, and I was so impressed, like very few people can just take the, the menu and just do it. Mike made the decision and I always say you, you, if somebody is an adult, you can't change their mind. Right. You literally can't. They have to make the decision to do that. And he flipped the switch.